Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, I am going to explain you about production of growth hormone by our DNA technology. I mean recombinant DNA technology. So the growth hormone which is produced by using this our DNA technology is called as a recombinant growth hormone. So in this video, I am going to explain you how the recombinant growth hormone can be produced by using this our DNA technology. So this will be explained to you later. So before entering into the topic, firstly you have to know what is growth hormone actually. So now let us learn what is growth hormone. I mean the introduction of this growth hormone. Then later I will explain you how the recombinant growth hormone can be produced by using this RDNA technology. So this growth hormone is called as a protein hormone. So why it is called as a protein hormone? Because it is made up of amino acids. We know that the proteins are made up of amino acids, right? Group of amino acids. So how many amino acids are uh, to, uh, will held together to form this growth hormone? 191 amino acids so this growth hormone consists of 191 amino acids whereas in some books it is mentioned as 190 amino acids but according to me the growth hormone consists of 191 amino acids right and this growth hormone is also named as somatotropin so why it is named as somatotropin because it is secreted from the somatotrophs and where there is somatotrophs present it is present in the anterior pituitary gland Right, so this from this anterior pituitary gland, this somatotropin is produced, or as the growth hormone is produced from this anterior pituitary gland. And how this growth hormone can be produced by uh, from this anterior pituitary gland by using a hormone called as ghrelin. So ghrelin is a peptide hormone which is produced from the stomach, and this ghrelin hormone will send signals to the anterior pituitary gland to secrete somatotropin, or else to secrete growth hormone. Right? So here this ghrelin plays a major and vital role for the production of somatotropin from the anterior pituitary gland. Right? So actually what is the use of this growth hormone? It is mainly used for the growth and metabolism of the body. It is mainly used for the growth. I mean growth is nothing but the development of bones and development of muscles. Whereas metabolism includes carbohydrate metabolism, protein metabolism, lipid metabolism. So all of this uh, you know will be functioned by this growth hormone. And the molecular weight of the growth hormone is 22,124 Daltons. And here, we know that the growth hormone is secreted from the anterior pituitary gland, right? So once it is secreted, then it acts upon this liver and other tissues. So once it is acted on this liver and as well as other tissues, then this liver as well as other tissues will produce IGF-1 hormone, right? IGF-1 hormone. So what is meant by this IGF-1 hormone? Insulin type growth factor 1 is the hormone uh, which mainly helps in the development of growth as well as uh, I mean development of bone growth as well as the development of muscle growth so in this way the growth hormone can uh, function it can be functioned like growth, uh, you know bone growth as well as the muscle growth so this function will be done by this IGF-1 which can be produced by this growth hormone itself from the liver as well as the other tissues so now let us see the structure of the growth hormone so if you see here this is the structure of the growth hormone so here what I have said you this growth hormone is made up of 191 amino acids. So if you count here there are totally all of these green color circles which I have drawn are the amino acids. The green color one which I have drawn are the amino acids. So if you count here properly totally 191 amino acids will be present. And it consists of amino group and it also consists of carboxyl group at the end. Right. And these are the amino acids which I have said you. And here uh, this uh, which I have mentioned this blue color one is nothing but the disulfide bond. So disulfide bond is mainly used to connect each of the amino acid chain so this is one of the amino acid chain like this uh, the amino acid chain has been continued right so to get attached with each of them this disulfide bond is present right and this disulfide bond also maintains the structure of the growth hormone right so now let us learn the growth hormone production by using this rdna technology now let us discuss about the production of the growth hormone by using rdna technology so let us consider this is a pituitary gland so we know that from the pituitary gland itself the growth hormone is produced right so in this pituitary gland the growth hormone is present right so from this pituitary gland what you are going to do is that you are going to extract cdn of human growth hormone right so do you think that directly cdn of human growth hormone can be can be extracted from this pituitary gland the answer is no why because instead of uh, extra extracting the cdn of human growth hormone directly it is not possible such that firstly the dna is extracted so what is extracted the dna of human growth hormone is extracted 
and now what you are going to do is that this DNA will undergo transcription process so once it undergoes the transcription then the introns will be removed from the DNA introns are nothing but the non-coding sequences right actually this DNA consists of coding sequences which are called as exons and non-coding sequences which are also called as introns so that non-coding sequences which are also called as introns will be removed from this DNA once it undergoes the process of the transcription once the introns are removed then only exons will be present right so all of those exons will get combined with each other to form a mRNA which is called as messenger RNA and now this mRNA will undergo the process of reverse transcription with the help of an enzyme called as reverse transcriptase and forms cDNA which is called as complementary DNA remember this complementary DNA which has been formed is related to the human growth hormone because the DNA which undergoes the transcription is related to the human growth hormone right so the formation of the cDNA will also be related to the human growth hormone so in this way from the pituitary gland you are going to extract the cDNA of human growth hormone by, by doing this process of transcription as well as a reverse transcription right so finally you have extracted the cDNA of human growth hormone by doing this process so now if you see the structure of the CDN of human growth hormone, what I have said you, I have said you that the human growth hormone consists of 191 amino acids, right? So if you see here, this is your 26 amino acid gene and this is your 24 amino acid gene and this will be uh, your 141 amino acid gene. So totally 191 amino acid gene. So this 26 amino acid gene is called a signal peptide. Actually, there is no use of the signal peptide for the production of human growth hormone by using this RDNA technology such that the signal peptide will be removed but there is one condition so what is that the signal peptide cannot be removed by itself such that it will use the neighboring gene also so what is the neighboring gene of this 26 amino acid gene 24 amino acid gene so what what, what will happen here this 26 amino acid gene will be removed along with the 24 amino acid gene because this 26 amino acid gene cannot be removed by itself such that it will use the neighboring gene to get removed so what will happen now so this is your 191 amino acid, uh, you know, 191 amino acid chain gene and this is your 26 amino acid gene and this is your 24 amino acid gene. So this is your 50 amino acid gene, 26 plus 24 is equals to 50, right? So this is your 50 amino acid gene and this is your remaining 141 amino acid gene, remember. So now what will happen is that you are going to use a restriction enzyme. So here if you see here, eco R1, eco R1 is a restriction enzyme which plays a major role for the separating of a DNA strand. So this is the DNA, I mean the complementary DNA which is also called as cDNA of human growth hormone. And now I have said you that the signal peptide cannot be removed by itself such that it will use the neighboring gene also. So the eco R1 will start its functioning on the 24 amino acid gene here, okay, at the position of the here as I have mentioned here. So here the eco R1 will start its functioning. So what is the main function of this eco R1? It mainly helps in the separating of the DNA strand. So what will happen is that the strand will get separated. So the separation of strand indicates what this 50 amino acid gene will be removed and here the 40, 141 amino acid gene will be removed I mean it will be separated I mean whatever what I want to say is that the both of the gene will get separated right so this 50 amino acid gene includes this 26 amino acid gene as well as the 24 amino acid gene which will get separated and now we don't have any use of this 50 amino acid gene but there is a use of this 141 amino acid gene so what is that use let us see now so on the other hand what you are going to do is that you are going to prepare synthetic gene. Synthetic gene is nothing but which consists of 24 amino acids. First 24 amino acids, right? So as this 26 amino acid gene is doesn't have any function, it will be removed. But this 24 amino acid gene has function, but it will also be removed. So what you are going to do is that on the other hand, you are going to prepare the same 24 amino acid gene chemically. I mean in the laboratory, especially you are going to prepare the synthetic gene, which consists of first 24 amino acids, right? And now what you are going to do is that this 24 amino acid gene which is also called a synthetic gene the synthetic gene as well as the cDNA gene will get ligated with the help of an enzyme called as T4 DNA ligase so this is a synthetic gene right which consists of 24 amino acids and this is the cDNA gene which has been left over right as I have said you this 141, 141 amino acid gene has highly requirement so this synthetic gene as well as the cDNA gene will get ligated with the help of an enzyme called as T4 DNA ligase what we have done we are we have ligated the synthetic gene and the cDNA gene and after this step, this is the product which will be obtained, which is called as processed recombinant cDNA, where both the synthetic gene as well as the cDNA gene will get ligated to form this processed recombinant cDNA, 
right and now on the other hand what you are going to do is that you are going to take a host cell and the host cell is nothing but the E. coli cell so why you are going to call this as a host cell because this process of recombinant cDNA which has been formed will get inserted into this E. coli cell so when, once you are going to insert them into a cell and that cell is called as a host cell right and hence that host cell we are going to take here is a E. coli cell Escherichia coli cell and we know that the Escherichia coli cell consists of plasmid vector right and that plasmid vector will get extracted so what will be done it will get extracted by performing a technique called as micro injection so micro injection technique i already explained and the link will be given in the description box once you, if you watch that video then you can understand how this plasmid vector can be extracted from this e coli cell right and now you have extracted this plasmid vector right and to this plasmid vector you are going to add the restriction enzyme so what is the main function of the restriction enzyme it is mainly help in breaking uh, you know, uh, you, it, it mainly helps in cutting down the strand. That's only the main function of this restriction enzyme. So this restriction enzyme will uh, bind to a particular restriction site of this plasmid vector and it will cut that particular strand, right? And this, and this is a gap which can be produced by this restriction enzyme. And in this gap, what you're going to do, you're going to insert this processed recombinant cDNA. So here, this is the processed recombinant cDNA which has been formed previously, right? So this processed recombinant cDNA will get inserted into the gap of this plasmid vector which has been formed by this restriction enzyme. So now, it resembles the structure like this. So this is called as a recombinant cDNA. So now, this is your processed recombinant cDNA and the remaining green color one is nothing but the plasmid vector. And now, this recombinant cDNA plasmid vector will get inserted into the E. coli cell. So here the same E. coli cell you are going to take here once you extracted this plasmid vector then the space of this E. coli cell will be empty right and that empty space will be filled again with this recombinant cDNA. Again you are going to reinsert it into this cell E. coli cell and now this E. coli cell is called as a recombinant E. coli cell. So why are you going to call this as a recombinant E. coli cell because it consists of modified plasmid. Modified plasmid is nothing but the recombinant cDNA right recombinant cDNA plasmid and make sure this recombinant cDNA is nothing but which is related to the human growth hormone right where we all of us know that because it has been prepared from the human growth hormone which has been excreted from the pituitary gland so now this is called as a recombinant E. coli and now what you are going to do is that you are going to culture this recombinant E. coli so what is so after culturing this recombinant E. coli cells then the number of the recombinant E. coli cells will get increased such that you are going to do the process of the fermentation as I have explained you uh, about this fermentation in the previous videos the link will be given in the description box but here I am going to give a small intro of this fermentation where the primary metabolite will get converted into secondary metabolite and here the primary metabolite is nothing but the recombinant E. coli cells which has been cultured for example if you take 100 recombinant E. coli cells and these primary metabolites are nothing but the 100 E. combinant E. coli cells and you are going to do the fermentation process such that to obtain the secondary metabolite which is called as a human growth hormone right so in this way the human growth hormone can be synthesized or else it can be produced by this using this rDNA technology thank you